for 60 years, myself and Rory O'Brady trod the roads of Ireland. We were comrades in arms, we were villains, and we did the devil together, and we have no regrets. And when I sat in his front sitting room one, three weeks ago, and he was barely able to talk, he still rose himself up in the chair. And he said to me, Dan, he says, we lit the torch, she's lighting well. And if we fail to free Ireland before we go, we will make sure that the next generation has the right to do that. And there are better men to come than ever we were. Brody was born to Matt and May Brady in the, on the 2nd of October 1932, the second of three children. Before that, his sister May, and after that, his brother Sean. And Rory O'Brady was born to be a Republican because all belonged to him were Republicans and had served that Republican cause. Matt O'Brady, his father, was severely wounded in an engagement with the British forces of occupation in 1919. And the man who stands here beside me, chaired in this meeting, Sean Lynch's father, was the man who brought him medical attention. And Matt O'Brady suffered a lot before he died at a young age of 42, and he died with a British bullet still in his body. That is the environment into which Rory O'Brady was born. My first encounter with Rory O'Brady was in the 1950s. And we can reminisce here among some old comrades when Rory O'Brady was a training officer in the west of Ireland. Before that, he traveled all North Longford and that area of Leinster as a training officer, first of all on a push bike, and then when he got him enough of money together, he got a little motorbike. And by God, he got around with it. And he met some people. And as the fellow says, he kicked some arse. <laughs> but anyways, I remember, and there'll be a few people out here today, including a great friend of his, Sean Scott, and my own brother-in-law, Pather Murray, who's here today, will remember the camps that Rory ran. Out in a forestry in July and August, the flies eating you, and you come in at night, and down in Mount Talbot, Tommy McDermott was the coke, and he had a big black pot, and you got IRA stew. <laughs> well, if you wet it, Rory O'Brady also wet it. And as Tommy McDermott says, it did hurt me up, boys. <laughs> so those were the days. And we went on from there to where Rory reached a very high popularity and he contested the general election of 1957. Let me explain to you that it was on the abstentionist policy. And Rory O'Brady was returned to Dal Airden on, on that policy. And he remained true to that policy right throughout his life. And when men took gold and took houses and took everything, Rory O'Brady took nothing. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And when he was interned in the Cora concentration camp, and let me say, we're surrounded here by all this big arm response unit. Oh, Rory O'Brady was a terrible, dangerous <laughs> man. <laughs> Rory O'Brady, first mission in the Irish Republican Army was an attack on Arborfield Barracks in the heart of the enemy territory in Britain. And he came away with a handful of weapons. And there was no armed response unit then. <laughs> and there was no armed response unit when Rory O'Brady led the Teeling column 
in the 1956 campaign in Fermanagh. And that was it. And then he was interned in the Cora. And I always remember in the Cora, there was a more diplomatic man than the armed response unit we have here today. He was a man, he was the OC commanding the Free State Forces. And he had to meet Notorio Brothy. And he said, I'll bend forwards, I lean backwards, I'll do anything for you, but I won't kiss the ground. <laughs> but the only time that Rory O'Bardi leant forward was when he went out under that wire fence. <laughs> Himself and Dahi O'Connor. Oh. <laughs> and I must pay a compliment to the people of North Longford, where he went to, and he was sheltered until he was built up strong enough to join his comrades in the 1956 campaign to continue the fight for Irish freedom. The fight that Rory O'Brothy has continued up to this day. There were all kinds of things happened in Republican circles. We have a bad history. We have a history of men who were bought and men who sold. But Rory O'Brothy never sold anything. He sold his soul to the Irish people and he remained true to them to the bitter end. Here, here. I am so proud to stand here today to pay the last respects to this man. This man, I traveled the roads, the length and breadth of Ireland. And you know a funny thing, we used to meet, we can see it now because we won't be meeting in this house anymore, it's vacant. But he used to pick me up at his sister May's house. And when May died, May was a very kind person and she was fully behind Rory. And when we were in the Cora in the 50s, May was so concerned about the Republican prisoners that she was very, she thought this thing out very well. And she says, well, I'll send a parcel, I'll collect a parcel of food, she says, and I'll send it in to the man with the largest family. And who do you think the man with the largest family was? Dan Over. <laughs> Flood of the country, a good job I was locked up. <laughs> so anyways, <coughs> times moved on and we all came through that period and then there was a lull in the Irish history program up until 1969. And in 1969, the man who laid the first wreath here, Sean Maguire, son of Commandant General Tom Maguire, who was the last surviving member of the executive of the second dawn, had handed over the powers that be to the Army Council of the IRA in 1938, had now handed it over when we were sold out by the Stickies in 1969, and had re-handed it out to the Continuity IRA in 1986, when our erstwhile comrades had sold the past. You know, I was speaking three weeks ago in Arigna at the rededication of the monument up there. And Rory O'Brady was very ill at the time. And a lot of people said he wouldn't be there. But as I mounted the platform to speak, a car drove up, driven by his wife, Patsy. And we got Rory out of the car and he took his place. And when I came down after speaking, he squeezed my hand and he said to me, it isn't often I see you in a new suit, but keep, <laughs> keep it pressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is why I am so proud to be here today with all you good Republicans, because there are so many good people in this country. Forget about the people that have sold the past. Forget about those. We won't even think about them. 
who have shook hands with the Queen, who have sold the Irish people down the drain. But when I sat in that front room with Rory O'Brady one, three weeks ago, he says, Dan, we have lit the flame. It's burning. I may not see it, but he says another generation will come. The same as they came in 69, and they will do it. And that was his belief right up to his death. He was such a man you could not explain. I have had so many happy memories of him. But the last thing I would say here today is that if we, re we respect his memory, you people, the young people of Ireland I'm appealing to here today, get into the ranks of the Republican movement. Join the Brits from our shore. Don't be ashamed to be a Republican. Stand out there like O'Brady did and take them on. That was Rory and that's the way it should be. We don't give a damn about these fellas that are here on the outside. We speak our mind because what I have to say today to you people, I couldn't read it off a paper because I have lived this with this man for 60 years. He was my voice, he was everything to me. And he was everything to so many people. He never put a foot wrong in those 60 years. He was the chief of staff. He was the publicity officer. He issued statements. He could never be contradicted. He held his true Republican principles to the end. And that is why you people are here today to honor such a great soldier of the Irish Republican Army. And I will conclude by saying, what about Rory O'Brady? I will conclude by saying what Pierce said at the grave of O'Donovan Rossa. They think they have intimidated half of us and they think they have bought the other half. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our patriot dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland on free shall never be at peace. That is the life and the story of Rory O'Brady. And I am so proud to be here doing this, and I'm sure he would be proud of me too. Goramila Maya Gulir on public abode.